Battletoads 2020 The Review. If you read the title for this video, you probably already know where I stand with this game. And just looking through YouTube, there's been some really bad reviews, even from the traditional legacy media websites. And I just have one question for them. What game did you play? I feel like we didn't play the same game at all. I just streamed it completely and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, there's certain specific things about it that I think could have been done a little better. Some things I could have done without, but overall, it was entertaining as hell. So we're gonna get into detail on why I feel that way, but before I do, I'd like to go ahead and introduce my Patreon page. If you'd like to help support the channel and allow me to continue creating content like this, you can become a patron for as little as $1 a month by clicking the link in the description below, or you can head over to patreon.com forward slash gamerthumbtv. And as always, for their continued support, I'd also like to thank my current patrons and channel members. I have been waiting for the Battletoads to return turned since they vanished off the face of the earth decades ago. Sure, we've gotten little teases here and there that we may see them again, like Rash popping up in Killer Instinct, the Toad showing up in Shovel Knight, cool little cameos, but I need another full game. That doesn't cut it. And that's what Battletoads 2020 is. At its heart, Battletoads is a beat-em-up. Sort of. It's never been a game that strictly sticks to one specific genre for the entire experience. What I find so strange is that now I'm seeing people putting the original Battletoads on this pedestal. I even saw a YouTube review that almost word for word said the original is a perfectly balanced game. This blows my mind on so many levels because the original game is notorious for being completely unbalanced in every definition of the word. Now, I do want to stress that I love Battletoads. Always been a fan since the original game. Played them all, owned them all, beaten them all. Yes, including the original NES version. But taking my love for the series aside and speaking objectively, no, the original was not perfectly balanced at all. It's so infamous for being unbalanced that it created this unreasonable difficulty level that you really had to push yourself to the limit to overcome. Most people simply aren't going to beat it. It is what it is. It wasn't hard because it was designed well, it was hard because it wasn't. If someone says the new one is a bad game because the original was perfectly balanced, that shows they've probably never even played the original past the first two to three levels because after that is when you really start seeing the game break down. One of the points that gets brought up about Battletoads 2020 is that it doesn't know what kind of game it is. It switches from beat em up style to other gameplay styles within the blink of an eye. This is true. But let's take that same criticism and apply it to the original. That was a core aspect of the game. That's a Battletoads thing. You're in a beat-em-up stage, then you go down a shaft that leads to a high-speed turbo tunnel section, to a 2D platformer filled with spikes and obstacles, multiple sections like this that actually get more difficult as the game progresses, a full-speed chase and a bunch of tubes while you're chased by a wheel, a race to the bottom of a shaft against a rat while a bomb is on a timer and ready to explode, another race where you have to quickly mash the D-pad in different directions, or you instantly die. A level, by the way, in which the two-player mode was actually broken. And then to a beat-em-up section again, this has always been a Battletoads thing, the mix of gameplay. The arcade game was strictly a beat-em-up, and that game rocked. One of the best beat-em-ups you can play, but it was short and sweet. With beat-em-up games, if they go on for just a little too long, they can really overstay their welcome and feel very repetitive. This is a more modern take on Battletoads, so it's a bit longer. To me, the change of gameplay helped break up the beat-em-up sections and help keep the game from getting stale after a couple hours. There was always something new happening as it progressed. Now, let's talk about the non-beat-em-up sections, my favorite being the turbo tunnels, of course. Yes, there's more than one. The most notorious section of the original Battletoads recreated here, but this time the Turbo Tunnel's camera view is from behind the player. So everything's coming towards the screen. It's literally playing the original Turbo Tunnel with a different camera angle. These sections are so much fun and they are very challenging, as they should be. And as it progresses, it starts adding more obstacles like these neon pink walls with different openings that you either have to drive through or jump through and you barely have time to think about it. I really enjoyed it as hard as it was. There's also these chase sequences 
Just think of the Donkey Kong Country minecart level, except something's chasing you all at the same time, you have to jump, and then hold a different button down depending on the type of service you're about to land to. It sounds very confusing, but feels natural while you're playing it. It's all reaction time based. One that got me completely by surprise was the vertical space shooter sections, another style of gameplay that were some of my favorite games back in the arcade days. If you've played a space shooter before, you know exactly what to expect. You shoot, you dash, to avoid obstacles flying at you until everything on the screen is dead and on the harder difficulties it is brutal they limit you to three hits and there's stuff on the screen everywhere it's just a barrage of colors that will probably give some people seizures but it's extremely satisfying once you figure out enemy patterns and learn different ways to avoid them while taking them all out one by one and we also have these 2d platforming sections like the original game but with some added puzzle elements too Honestly, if they took these levels right here, made them bigger and fleshed out with more varied gameplay, you can easily have a Battletoads Metroidvania style game. If any developers are listening, hint hint. And near the end of the game, there's this chase sequence where you get to play as the Dark Queen. Slime is coming down from the top of the screen, racing down to kill you, and you have to rush through avoiding obstacles and gliding down spike traps. It was nuts. Also inspired by the original Rat Race segment. If you've played the original, you can see the similarities instantly. Except without the broken game mechanics and rat flying past you constantly. Aside from the different levels, there's also some mini games that come up throughout the story. These were a hit or miss for me, like the one rock paper scissors one that's called toad shambo i think it was it's like a toad version of rock paper scissors except i didn't really understand it it gives you a little brief explanation at the beginning but then it throws you into the mini game and you completely forget what you're supposed to do i was just pressing buttons and i beat it i kind of feel like it was scripted just for a gag but i'm really not sure others were super fun like when pimple meets a cult and he learns to live a life of peace but they end up being a death cult and they start being mean to him and he just flips out on them and then they attack you and you have to swat them all away. That was super fun. But some of the mini games come out of nowhere and suddenly you find yourself trying to figure out what to do. Like one where you have to make shapes during some Olympic style competition. Another one where they just splash a bunch of different screens in front of you with buttons all over the place. With this one, my initial reaction was, what the hell do I do here? And it took a moment to figure out what the game was even wanting me to do. It took a little while, but once I actually got in there and figured it out, and got into it, it was sort of fun. It kind of overstayed its welcome a little bit. It lasted a little too long. So not all the mini games really landed for me. Could have done without some of them. As far as the beat em up segments, let me call it the main component of the game. It's fun. It's simple and it plays really well. Those are the most important things right there for a beat em up. It shouldn't be anything overly complicated. You hit the face buttons to do combos and various attacks, and you can use your tongue to spit gum at enemies and freeze them in place for a second. It's a beat em up. Not much more detail to dive into there, but I would like to point out how this one actually is balanced. Usually in Battletoads games, you pick your toad, call it a day, at their core, they all feel the same. Their attacks might look a little different, and that's about it. Not this time. You can swap between each toad with the press of a button. Normally, I just play as Rash because he wears sunglasses and that's 90s cool. But I found myself constantly switching to all the different toads for different situations. Each one was perfectly tailored for different scenarios. Rash, for example, is the middle ground one that's great for most enemies. He's got normal strength and speed. But when you find yourself surrounded by a ton of enemies, it's a great idea to switch to Zitz, whose attacks are a little less powerful, but he's crazy fast, so he can dodge around the screen really quickly. Pimple's the bruiser, he's a bit slower, but if you're fighting a boss, for example, and want to get that health bar down quicker, he hits hard. So there's actually a reason this time to play as specific Toads. Why on earth are some people praising the original game as balanced, but not mentioning this right here? It's a massive improvement when it comes to this series, and should be the way moving forward. And of course there's boss battles, each one feels very unique. Much, much easier than anything in the original NES game, but they are fun. And I haven't mentioned the story though. Not that the Battletoads need a deep story, but there is a story here. And it's always been a kind of tongue-in-cheek universe where they kind of know they're in a video game. The Toads aren't well known anymore, so essentially they want to find the Dark Queen and regain their glory. But there's a new bad guy in town, the Topians. And they stole the Dark Queen's power, so she has to team up with them to help defeat the Topians. That's the
the story as deep as it should be, and it's told in this animated cutscene style that are genuinely hilarious. I want to stress this as powerfully as I can. This version of Battletoads demands a cartoon series. Please license this out. It could easily be on Adult Swim. It's not overly adult, not overly kitty, somewhere in between. And the humor is on point. Like one of my favorite moments, for example, is when Pimple wakes up panicked because he thinks they're being robbed. I mean, that alone is funny because he's the big tank of the team and he's waking up concerned that there might be a burglar. He wakes up Zitz to tell him that they're being robbed and Zitz makes the point that they have nothing worth stealing so it doesn't matter. So Pimple leaves to go apologize to the robber for not having anything worthwhile to steal. Well-written comedy. And the most common criticism I probably hear about this game is the classic it's only three hours long line. I roll my eyes when I hear this most of the time because I usually find that it 100% depends on what kind of player you are. Sure, if you put the game on easy, blast through it with two other players, of course you can beat it in three hours. Here's my ending screen. Just over seven hours on the hardest difficulty, on single player. Let me mention real quick too, it is multiplayer but there's no online. I do feel that was a missed opportunity. It would have been really fun to play with friends online. But going back to the length, this amount of time isn't even counting if you're the kind of player that wants to go back, get all the achievements and collectibles. That's the kind of player I am. So when you hear someone say it's only three hours long, the next step is to understand what kind of player that person is and what kind of player you are. And here's a little bit of behind the scenes YouTube secrets. A lot of these reviewers blast through the game as quickly as possible to get a review out as soon as possible after a review embargo lifts. And also the fact that it's a new release at $20. It's not even a fully priced game, so this length is even more acceptable. Another huge criticism is the art style. I'll say this. That is 100% personal preference, so I can't tell you if it's appealing or not. You're either going to love it, or you're going to hate it. I think it matches the tone of the game perfectly, and I like it. Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, for example, is one of my least favorite looking Zelda games. At the same time, it's one of my favorite Zelda games in the series overall, because it plays so damn good. Although I do not like the Dark Queen's redesign at all, I do agree with that. She just doesn't resemble the original character at all, and I, I get the story reason. She's been cooped up for like 26 years, so she's not a young woman anymore, even as gray in her hair, but I think she would have looked way better if it was something closer to the original look. Something more recognizable, like the toads. The toads look just like the toads. But at the same time, if the look of the queen is your only criticism, let's be real. You were already ready to hate this game before it was released. So to sum it up, I keep hearing how drastically different Battletoads 2020 is from the original. Not really. As I've compared and contrasted in this review, it follows the same formula as the original Battletoads, just updated and better from a video game design point of view, and it adds new things, which is exactly what a follow-up made decades later should be. I recommend it, I had a blast with it, if you want to check it out, try it yourself. It's really not an expensive game, and you may just enjoy it. Leave me your thoughts down below on Battletoads if you played it, how did you enjoy it or not enjoy it, and what do you want out of future Battletoads titles? I want Battletoads Double Dragon The Ultimate Team 2. Now's the time to do it. I'll catch you guys later. Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it, so why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.